Next question is from Billy B3. How much sugar a day is too much? Anything over 27.25. <laughs> you know what's funny about this? Actually, that's close to a number I used to try and keep my clients yeah, under. 25 was the number. I was it depends to. on the person, but I, I will say this. Here's what the studies will actually show. The, the amount of sugar that you eat doesn't really matter as much as if you, it, when your calories are low, especially yeah. if you're in a deficit. Yeah. If you're in a deficit, sugar doesn't have like this crazy negative effect. It's when you're in this calorie surplus that you start to see problems with lots of sugar. Now, that being said, I will say this. Sugar, in my experience with clients, does stimulate the appetite in a particular, in a, in a very interesting way. So if I have a client that's like, hey, I read the studies. It's funny because Lane likes to, to actually counter that argument all the he time. He does, and, but my experience is not like that. Now, I know it's usually sugar in combination with fat that causes the, the, you know, the palatability and all that stuff. But in my experience, I've had clients who've done this. They're like, hey, look, these were, these were like doctors who read the studies. I'm like, Sal, in this study, it showed that high sugar, low calorie, blood markers improved. There was no difference between that and a, a diet that was low in sugar. And I said, okay, give it a shot and let me know how you feel. And sure enough, they came back and they're like, yeah, my appetite is all over the place. And it's harder for me to eat lower calories than when I eat more complex carbohydrates and more fats and proteins. So that's the one thing I will say. But, you know, sugar in a high calorie, in the context of a high calorie diet, can have some pretty inflammatory effects uh, in, in a lot of people and cause maybe potential issues with insulin uh, resistance. Do you guys have any experience? My, ex my experience with my clients with this is that if I'm, if I'm um, coaching a competitor who's weighing and measuring and tracking their food, um, so long as we stay within their parameters and the, the guidelines I give them, then allowing them to have sugar in the diet is no big deal. Uh, so long as they're following their parameters and they're yeah. and they're sticking to that. If I am trying to teach a client to kind of intuitively eat, intuitively eat or just change some behaviors, one of the first go to things I do is actually cut back almost all sugar intake, because I find that when I don't do that, clients do tend to yeah. overeat. What 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 the mechanism that does that? I can't tell you. I can't mm -hmm. tell you exactly what's happening that causes people to do that. It's just I've experienced that with so it's many clients thing. and myself enough times yeah. mm -hmm. that I just like if I allow a little bit of sugar in my in my diet, whether it be just like oh, I decide, let's say, um, you know, yesterday I was moving around a lot and I could totally afford to have that, you know, 300 calories of, of Sour Patch candy. And I haven't had something like that in yeah. forever. And I have that. Something that I can guarantee happen is that night, all of a sudden, I want ice cream. Or the next day, all of a sudden, I want a soda. Like it, I, My cravings change. The minute I introduce it into, into my diet, now I start to crave that. And it, just, and it doesn't mean that I can't. It doesn't mean I can't get buff still or get shredded and still insert those things in the diet. It just makes it harder for me. It's yeah. like now I have this other thing that I have to do. It's already hard enough mm -hmm. to restrict calories and stay in this, this calorie intake and exercise on a regular basis. Oh, now when I allow sugar to occasionally come in there, now I'm also battling this craving thing that I know versus when I eliminate it and I stick to all whole foods and I don't have any, the only sugar I'm getting is from, from now natural sources like fruit whole fruit yes not fruit juice that's right it's just yeah. when I, if i'm only getting there i don't battle these things mm -hmm. yeah. and the moment that i allow it in there even if my calories are low and it's not going to affect me and put fat on my body now i'm battling that craving yep. again and so for me that's enough to coach clients when i'm teaching them hey let's if that's not something you have to have in the diet let's get rid of that shit mm -hmm. yeah for me i mean it's it's just a behavior thing. It's it's something that, you know, evolutionarily we've been hardwired to be rewarded. Like that that signal is is a massive loud signal of reward. And it's it's like, you know, once you introduce that signal, uh, you know, it's just a natural response of like wanting to introduce that back and like keep that into the routine uh, because it's it's something that just hardwired wise like it's we're going to be fighting that a lot that that response and so it's it's a very strong uh a signal and, and, and regardless of this like this nuanced talk that you know a lot of people get in this debate on whether or not it's bad for you or it's toxic or it you know it, it, it leads to all these diseases whatever all that stuff like granted like calories are a big 
you know, proponent of this is in terms of like it having more weight, uh, you know, if, if you're over your calorie limit and, and having sugar in there, it's probably more, you know, of a problem than, you know, if you're under calories and, and it's in there. But at the end of the day, behaviorally, like this is just something that you're just going to continually fight and it could, you know, like take over a majority of what you're consuming. The other thing, it, ch it changes the way fruits and vegetables taste for me. That's the other thing I don't like about it. So if I allow, let's say I always kept my calories under my, you know, my maintenance. Um, so I'm losing body fat, but I, every day I eat Sour Patch Kids in there. My apple and my vegetables taste different. They do not have the same taste as if I were to have no added sugar into my diet and then I eat those things. So part of why I don't like it either was I remember the first time that I cut sugar out for an extended period of time and then actually bit into an apple you know, or had some asparagus like that. The food, the food actually tastes richer to me when I'm not adding any sugar. If I'm letting sugar in the diet on a regular basis, it changes m my palate. Yeah, that the sweet, the perception of sweet is very powerful, and it it can definitely you definitely build a tolerance to it, don't you? Um, and it, everybody experiences this. Again, if you eat lots of sugar, you'll find that sweet. In fact. Uh, artificial sweeteners are several hundred or thousands of times sweeter than sugar. And I've worked with enough clients who have had lots of artificial sweeteners and prefer the flavor of them to sugar because it's actually sweeter. I've actually yeah. had people tell me that. When they drink a soda mm -hmm. with sugar, it doesn't taste as good as the Diet Coke. And I think it has to do with, my personal opinion, it has to do with that perception of, uh, of sweetness. I mean, evolutionarily speaking, Justin, you know, sugar in its natural forms was probably pretty rare, okay? So finding lots of fruit, not that you actually planted and I'm talking about before agriculture, when for most of the time humans were on earth, pretty rare that you'd walk around and find a apple growing or some berries. And by the way, the apples and berries and fruit that we have today has been modified mm. and bred to be much higher in sugar. Apples were full of seeds. There was very More little bitter. meat. You know, yeah. strawberries looked very Half different. Half the size too, by the way. Yeah, and, and <laughs> it weren't nearly as sweet. We, I mean, carrots, near, not nearly as sweet. Like everything was not nearly as sweet. So it was one of those things that was, we just didn't get a lot of. I mean, honey maybe, but honey, you had to go kill, like battle a bunch of bees <laughs> in order to get to it. And yeah. if you look at, you know, modern hunter-gatherers, it's a big deal to get honey. It's just not something you see quite common, and but it's but it's a very quick source of energy. So it makes sense that it would trigger these behaviors in us or, or these feelings that we we're gonna go seek it out because it's a very you know quick source uh, of energy. So that's that's for me. I see that it changes people's behaviors, but the studies do show that all the negative effects that come from sugar, if your calories are low and you're getting adequate protein and fat, not nearly as big of a difference. When your calories are high, though, high sugar plus high calorie, yeah, it's problematic. That starts to look like it causes uh, lots of problems. The, and the people I find that are most staunch about defending sugar ha are addicted to it. That's I <laughs> swear to God. Yeah, it's like you. Or they have products they're trying to sell that have a lot. Dude, of sugar. When, like when I see, I, Lane always talks about this stuff, right? So he he's he defends sugar a lot because of how many people have demonized it, right? Which I'm not pro that either, right? I'm not pro demonizing sugar either, but it, uh, making people aware of it's. Uh, addictive properties or how it could change the cravings or change your palate, I think it's very important. And the people that get behind them, like, yeah, fuck those guys. And then you click on their thing and there's like videos yeah. of them doing Sour Patch Kids. Yeah, donuts yeah. and deadlifts. And, like, yeah, dude, you're yeah. so funny. You, you know, Or donuts every single day. It's like you, people want to, it's like the whole squatting thing, like telling people not to squat. I hate that. I don't like that messaging. And I remember when we first met Lane, that was one of the things that we would challenge yeah. him a lot on is that it's not that I think he's wrong. I actually, he's right. What he's saying is right. But I also come from the place of training a lot of people, regular people yeah. that are trying to create better behaviors in their life. And could you do it with having sugar, added sugar and candy every once in a while? Absolutely. Is it going to be more difficult? Fuck yes, it will be. Yeah. Yeah. Usually the people that eat a lot of sugar are not getting it from whole fruit, are they? Yeah. They're getting it from, from other yeah. things. And I tell you what, it definitely feels different to eat 70 grams of processed sugar in candy or in a soda than having a you know starch seventy grams of starchy carbohydrates, it feels different on the body. I think most people would agree with that. It gives you totally different feeling. Yeah. 
you like the information in this clip, you guys are going to love the information in this full episode. Make sure you subscribe and check it out.